Good evening from the Kiev Post. This is Claudia Palazzo, and today we have here Mr. Mamuka Mamulashvili, which is the founder and commander of the Georgian Legion in Ukraine. Thank you for accepting our invitation, Mamuka. Hello, hello. Thank you. So I would like to know from your side some operational insight first. You are fighting uh, in the East since 2015. What are the major 14. differences? 14, sorry. What are the major oh. differences in uh, Russia's tactics and strategy? Is there a substantial change of approach or just oh, a change of pace? There, there. Actually, we are facing the full scale war eight years already. It's not uh, 24th of February when it started. So there are there is no big difference uh, during all these eight years. Uh, the only thing that uh, is new uh, during this war is airstrikes and ballistic missiles. So there is no big new, uh, difference. We are fighting the same Russian regular forces as we did all these eight years. And uh, Russia is doing actually the same terroristic acts in Ukraine as it was doing. Thank you. And what are their major vulnerabilities of the enemy of the on the terrain? Do you think? Oh, you know, as I mentioned, uh, we, uh, we we don't see big difference even with uh, the war in Georgia in. Uh, 2008 or uh, in 90s, so it is quite similar using separative regimes and uh, making a hybrid war. So uh, for us Georgians, it's quite familiar what they're doing, the weapon that they're using and their strategy, if we can call it strategy at all. They are just uh, targeting uh, civilian uh, populated areas, killing mostly civilians and uh, then entering villages or uh, towns. So uh, in my opinion, it is not um, uh, a modern war. It is, it is a barbarian uh, war style that Russia is doing. They are killing and raping children and women. Uh, so unfortunately, we have such huge uh, uncontrollable power in the modern world. I see. What do you think uh, would be a game changer for Ukraine to win the war? What is Ukraine more in need now uh, in terms of weapons or even uh, diplomatic moves? What do you think would be a game changer to win this war? Uh, I don't think that diplomacy will uh, play any role uh, now in Ukraine. The only uh, uh, thing that Russia takes into account is a physical power. So Ukraine mostly needs uh, artillery system, newest artillery system, uh, MLRS systems uh, to fight Russia. So that's the weapon we are waiting for for quite a long time. And unfortunately, we have a delay in delivering those uh, uh, artillery systems to Ukraine. And uh, I want uh, for the politicians who are delaying it to Ukraine, for them to know that each day and the minute when they hesitate giving Ukraine weapon takes human lives, thousands of Ukrainian lives of children and women. So they have to think well uh, while they uh, uh, make Ukraine go through bureaucracy. Yeah. Yeah. Let's let's say this message loud and clear. Be quick in sending weapons to Ukraine. So what we need air defense systems also. Sorry. We need also air defense systems, Patriots, that will provide the uh, uh, locked sky above Ukraine. And we'll, we'll, we're we're going to have less victims among the civilian population. So covering the skies would have been uh, the first move to make. Oh, yes. So along with uh, MLRS systems. Yeah. What do you think would be, what can we credibly hope for the short and midterm? Can you please repeat the question? I did not hear you. What can we hope for the short and midterm? What do you think uh, it is 
I think I think Ukraine is going to win this war. Ukraine is going to deoccupy its uh, territories very soon, as soon as we get uh, precise artillery systems for Ukraine. And what do you think would be the development on the long run? Oh, uh, you know, we we'll all have to understand. I mean, uh, the uh this world society is that ukraine today is fighting the biggest terroristic states in the world and uh, each of us has to be helpful each of us uh, should not be buying natural resources from russia as does for example germany france or uh, italy uh they cannot uh, feed terrorists with one hand and help ukraine with another it is immoral so they have to understand that uh, today, Ukraine is the only country that took a challenge to fight terrorists. Thank you. So, how will Ukraine will ultimately? How will Ukraine win? Oh, you know, with the help of our partners, Western partners, so we are going to win this war. But unfortunately, it has already costed uh, tens of thousands of lives, and it will cost uh, more uh, thousands of Ukrainian lives. And Ukraine is giving the most precious that it has to defend democracy and freedom, its uh, human lives. And uh, all the other countries have, have to unite uh, around Ukraine, and they have to help, but uh, really help, not to, you know, I would call it bureaucratic help or, uh, you know, uh, one hand help because uh, uh, nobody has a right today to uh, buy anything from Russia. We should all boycott everything Russian. Thank you. You are a veteran and you have witnessed it, the war, the Abkhaz war, the Valley war, and after the 24th of February, some analysts started to think they could draw a parallel with this war, especially the 2008 one, to understand this better, to forecast what would happen. Uh, what do you think are the main similarities and differences with that war? And do you think this is a useful parallel? As you were mentioning before, there are many similarities, please. You know, uh, in 2008, uh, Georgia was already saying that Ukraine is going to be next, but nobody believed Georgia. Moreover, a lot of uh, uh, European uh, countries blamed Georgia in starting a war. Uh, and unfortunately, Georgia is too small to resist these uh, media attacks and could not uh, handle it in 2008. But it's clear for everybody that Russia did the same in Georgia in 2008, what it is doing in Ukraine. And if we would all react in 2008, we would not get the full scale war today in Ukraine. So unfortunately, our societies learn nothing from uh, two world wars. And uh, we have a lot of corruption. We have a lot of bureaucrats and politicians that are feeding from Russian hands, especially in Europe. So unfortunately, they don't want to open their eyes and really uh, see what is going on in Ukraine. Similarities are, are clear. Russia has started war in Georgia. Russia started aggression, killed civilian population, and then blamed Georgia in starting the war. Today, they are doing the same, that Ukraine was preparing a full-scale war against Russia, and that's why they you know, started it uh, in advance. Mm -hmm. And uh, all throughout, during this period, like all throughout 2022, we have seen other problems, other spotlights of conflict. We had a renewed combat in uh, nagorno karabakh two years ago and um, in the region in general. Do you think Russia is going to stop here? Do you think we have to expect some other aggressions now, like even while they're busy in Ukraine? 
uh, I don't think Russia has enough power now to start anything new. But if Ukraine loses this war, uh, all uh, NATO country, countries are under a big threat. So uh, all of us have to be careful uh, what is going on in Ukraine. So in my opinion, we have to all unite and do whatever we can to help Ukraine win this war. Mm -hmm. um... Until the formation of the International uh, uh, Legion this year, the Georgian Legion has been so far the more, most internationalized. And yeah. um, I was wondering, what is the experience of having your life even depending from a fellow which comes from a diverse, totally diverse background, how it is to fight side by side with so many different people? I would say it's not totally diverse because, uh, uh, first of all, all those guys are united uh, around the idea of freedom and defending democracy. So they have a lot of in common. Second, uh, most of Georgians and uh, European countries participated in Iraqi and Afghanistan missions. Uh, so they have you know, the same level of education and same level of uh, experience and they can easily work with each other. Georgian Legion is recruiting mm -hmm. foreigners for eight years already in comparison to International Legion. Uh, Georgian Legion is the biggest foreign formation in, in the Ukrainian army. So we set up uh, uh, the work among uh, different experiences of different armies very well. And uh, our unit is the most effective in the Ukrainian army right now. There are more than 32 countries, uh, representatives of 32 countries in a Georgian legion. Oh, wow. So these people come and um, join the fight for Ukraine because they're joining the fight for freedom, yeah? But yes. how do you live your everyday life on the terrain? How it is life for a person there? How is it? Excuse me, I, I did not get the, the question. The everyday life, the everyday life on the ground. We have special forces. We have special operation forces. So uh, each squad, we're divided into small squads that are doing special operations. So each squad has its own life. Uh, they work all autonomously and uh, mostly they're targeting command centers of Russia. So everyday life is a um, intensive war for uh, for Georgian Legion. We're uh, not having a rest very often, and uh, we're doing a good job because we know it is very important for all freedom-loving people, not only for Ukrainians. Thank you so much. This was Mr. Mamu Kamamulashvili, commander and founder of the Georgian Legion. This is Claudia Palazzo from the Kiev Post. Thank you.